Hi, this is Mike. This video is about how to make two autonomous AI chatbots have a conversation with each other. This tutorial uses Python, ChatGPT, and Langchain to conduct a debate between two autonomous AI agents. One is an AI accelerationist and the other is an AI alarmist. The code came from this article by Kobus Grayling. I just had to put it in Colab and make a few changes and updates. So first I wanna go through the output of this AI debate and then we will go into the setup and then dig a little bit deeper into the code itself. This is the output of the final debate. It starts with the moderator who speaks to both the accelerationist and the alarmist. To the accelerationist, how has the implementation of automation and AI enhanced job opportunities and productivity? The alarmist, what potential job placement or negative societal consequences have resulted from the rise of automation and artificial intelligence? And then a generated dialogue. The alarmist cites some data from the World Economic Forum about how 19% of U.S. workers could see 50% of their workplace tasks impacted by AI systems. And the accelerationist responds, 50% of companies expecting to adopt AI expect it to create jobs well ahead of the 23% of respondents who expected to displace jobs. So they have this back and forth with statistics that were produced by running searches on DuckDuckGo using ChatGPT's ability to summarize those articles and create a response with prompts from the system as to how to make their case. So first off, why is this interesting? Well, one, it has some potential interesting use cases. So you could use this in games, you could use this in social apps on the web, simulations, etc. These theoretical accelerationists and alarmists could actually use AI to generate their talking points for an actual debate. But Beyond just the practical implementation of the technology, what is a world like where these autonomous AI agents are interacting with each other and with humans? There's been a lot written about this. You can imagine scenarios where the agents are spreading disinformation. You could also imagine them doing work on your behalf. And while this example provides some guardrails and instructions that the agents have to honor, what would happen if these agents didn't have those guardrails and were essentially prompting themselves, giving themselves their own instruction rather than a human giving them instruction? Let's look at this code itself and figure out how it was set up. I put this all in a Google Colab notebook. Google Colab is an environment online where you can execute Python code to do AI, machine learning, et cetera. And so this is my environment. I've got some API keys set up here that you all need if you're gonna run this code yourself. And I will show you how to get those in a bit. But just know for now, this is the programming environment that I'm using. You can run this code online and I'll share the link. You can copy this and modify it. If you do anything interesting with it, I'd love to hear about it. So here's the setup. We've got a library called Langchain, which does all the orchestration, the communication between the large language model and the search tools. The large language model that we're using is OpenAI's GPT-4. You could theoretically use a different large language model, but you'd have to modify the code. And then the tools that the AI has access to are DuckDuckGo for search, Wikipedia, and Archive, which is a sort of open access research repository. So it's looking at those sources to come up with talking points for this debate. So then there's some parameters that we're setting for this simulation. We're telling the large language model to take only the top two results from its searches in order to formulate a response. We're setting the temperature at 0.2 and temperature is a degree of fidelity to the source material versus creativity or randomness. So we're setting that number pretty low. It's a number between zero and one. Then we are just capping the debate at six conversations. Now, if you've used a large language model before, you know that you can give them these sort of personas and they will respond in that tone and with that frame of reference. So we are specifying the personas from which this debate should be conducted. The personas are an AI accelerationist and an AI alarmist, as I mentioned. We're giving them also a topic, the current impact of automation and artificial intelligence on employment. So that's what they're going to be responding to. And then we also specify the goal, which is to persuade your conversation partner of your point of view. Now, each time the agent responds, they are given the context of the conversation that preceded it. So they are building their response based off the entire debate, not just the last thing said by their opponent. 
Okay, so now we get into the generated output. So we give human specified system prompt, please reply with creative description of the AI accelerationist and the alarmist, speak directly to them, give them a point of view, do not add anything else. And then they generate these perspectives on their own. So the AI accelerationist is a visionary advocate for the relentless expansion of artificial intelligence and automation. And the alarmist is an anxious soul trapped in the dark abyss of technology's potential dangers, casts a skeptical gaze upon the rapid advancements of automation and artificial intelligence. So they are going to be keeping those personas in mind each time they respond. The topic is the current impact of automation and artificial intelligence on employment. And we give them these instructions. Your goal is to persuade your conversation partner of your point of view. Do look up information with your tool to refute your partner's claims. Do cite your sources. Do not fabricate fake citations. Do not cite any source that you did not look up. So we've hard coded those instructions in. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, there is the potential for these AI agents to create their own instructions and create their own personas. Okay, so then on to the actual debate. We're providing these search queries, job displacement due to automation and artificial intelligence to the alarmist, to the accelerationist, positive impact of AI and automation on job opportunities. And they go off and they conduct a search. And the search is sort of a hodgepodge of different sources from the tools that we've given it. So I'm listing the output of that search, which they're using as an observation. And the AI is essentially summarizing this into a response. Now, if this wasn't pre-programmed, we could ask the large language model to cite its sources. But as it is here, I had to do some searches to find out where it was getting this information. So if we read the observation, it's a bit disjointed. You get to a place where they're saying, Google unveiled new AI software to build presentations. And there are so dot, dot, dot. And then it starts some new sentence, which is from some other search. So I pasted bits and pieces of this conversation into a search engine and found the articles. So you would have been living under a rock if you didn't know how artificial intelligence is set to affect jobs. That's from this article from Nexford University, which was done with a search by the AI on DuckDuckGo. Then nearly half, 49% of companies expect adopting AI to create jobs. There we go. More than 90% of American workers want AI-supported data collection until it hits the limit of the amount of information we want to collect. So as I mentioned, if you want to run this code for yourself and see the results for yourself, you are more than welcome to do so. I'll post a link to this collab notebook. You can duplicate it you can customize it. You will need these API keys. I will post links to where to get them, but you'll need the OpenAI API key, the search engine API key. And then if you want to use Langsmith, you'll need the Langsmith API key. In order to use these secrets, Google Colab gives you a little code snippet here of how to import them. And then you just replace secret name with whatever you called this thing in the interface. And you need to make sure to turn on notebook access. Never put your actual API keys in the code itself over in this column here. If you do that, other people can get your API keys and use them for themselves. You can access the secrets from this little key icon, but then all of your Python code itself goes in here. And if you've never used a Colab notebook, you can add code blocks here. You can go into a code block and modify the code. And then each block can be run independently, or you can run the code for the entire notebook. I've divided them up into blocks of code so that if I hit an error, I'll know where the error is occurring and I can test as I go. You can see you can move these code blocks up and down. And then last but not least, if you do hit an error, I had an error with one of my libraries that I was importing here. And so I went to this import error and Colab now can actually use AI to suggest how to fix the error. So it gave me this suggestion, which was to install typing extensions. I tried that. It actually did work. I did have to restart the kernel. And then because of that, I modified the code here to include this block to install typing extensions. So that should work for you. And then before we dive any further into the code, I just want to show you Langsmith. I've mentioned it a few times. It is a dashboard for using Langchain that allows you to monitor your application. So this is my application, called it agent to agent. 
it has access to 2,677 tokens. And if we know what those tokens cost us, we can determine how much money we're spending on API credits. This shows us our latency. It's in red. You can see there's quite a bit of latency, 21 seconds to generate the content for this. And if we dive in even further, you can see our first prompt here was executed in two seconds and then 1.4, 2.36. But then the latency really starts to build. And part of the reason that it builds is because we are adding tokens to provide additional context to the AI agents. Obviously, that's because they need to remember the dialogue that has transpired. So we're just putting that into the input and it's just getting longer and longer because it's including the conversation that preceded it. Now, one of the strategies that some people employ is they actually summarize that conversation rather than put it in verbatim. So that's one thing you could try to do if you wanted to, to try and speed things up. You've heard companies make claims that the AI has memory. That's what they're talking about. They're talking about this context. Okay, so back to the code. You can see I've run all these cells already. So it's showing any output that the system generates as a result of having run this stuff. So let's look at what each cell does. Here, we're just creating variables for all of our API keys. Then we're using pip to install all of these libraries, these Python libraries. Pip is a Python package manager. So code that other people write, we can bring it in here and leverage. And you can see the normal way you would run pip is to just say pip install. But for Colab to generate system messages, we have to precede that command with this percent sign. And that way it knows it's a system command, not a notebook command. So all of this requirement already satisfied is because I ran this a few times because I kept getting import errors. This is always one of the tricky things with software development, bringing in these libraries. Now that we have access to those libraries, one of them was Langchain. Now we can say from Langchain, Let's bring in these agents, give them access to these tools. We'll bring in OpenAI. We'll get access to a prompt template where we can give instructions to the AI. We set our environment variables so that our searches work, so that our large language model responses work. We log everything to Langsmith. And then there's just some various other tools that we'll need in order to make this conversation happen. You can see these schemas. AI message is a message from the AI. Human message is our instructions to the AI. And then the custom code really comes in here, this dialogue agent. This is the code written by this person, Cobus Grayling. And he's just creating this template for the back and forth conversation that's going to happen. So this stuff's going to run every time one AI needs to respond. And you can see this is that system prop. This is why those tokens we're building is because it's saying, here's the conversation so far. And then it inserts the conversation that has transpired thus far in order to formulate a response. So it retrieves the message, tells the AI who said what, and then this dialogue simulator is the thing that runs the loop, incrementing the step each time, choosing the next speaker. If we hit that maximum number of steps, we stop the loop. So here's some of the stuff you might be interested in modifying. We are giving these agents names. You could modify the names. We are giving them tools. These are the places it's going to search. Mentioned archive, DuckDuckGo is DDG, Wikipedia. And you could give these AI agents different sources of information that they might be likely to go to. And this is the topic for the search. And this is the topic of the debate. It inserts those two participants here. So names.keys, these are the keys, these are the values and it's giving some additional instruction to the large language model. Speak directly to name being person responding, give them a point of view, don't add anything else. And then I'm just logging some of that information so I can see how the system is responding. If I left this out, it would still work because of the code above, but I just wanna be able to see it. So jumping down here a bit, we have this instruction to the moderator. We're saying, make the topic more specific, keep it within this word limit, which we specified as 50 words. And then we go on to the actual debate between the two AI agents. This is where some of those parameters come into play. You can see top K is two results. So we don't want to exceed our context limit. We don't want our responses to be too slow. So we're limiting it to these two results. And then I mentioned temperature. If you wanted to make the responses a bit more crazy, you could crank this up to one. 
if you wanted them to be essentially a summation of the research that they did, you might try setting this to zero. You could also use a different GPT model. Note that it is calling chat open AI. So you can only use models within chat open AI's library. You can't say call llama here or one of the other open source LLMs from chat open AI. You would have to go back up here and install something other than open AI and something supported by Langchain's orchestration network. So I would have to check and see who they support at this point, but they do have a variety of LLMs that you can use. And I should probably be using something other than open AI. Maybe that's what I'll do for the next video. Okay, back down here, we're almost done. You can see while the class specified the code to be run, this block here is what kicks everything off. So we're saying run this in six loops. Right now we're at loop zero, declare a variable called simulator, which calls our dialogue simulator class, pass in our agents, pass in the function that's gonna switch between each speaker. We're calling reset just to make sure that if it's run before we are starting over versus trying to insert the same stuff into a loop that's already run. And then this is our loop. And this is where we increment where we're at in the loop. We ask it to print the name and the message, and that's what you get here. So this is the stuff that I've synthesized in this document here. Moderator, what potential displacement or negative societal consequences? That matches up with what we see here. You can see the search is happening. The DuckDuckGo search for job displacement due to automation and artificial intelligence. You would be living under a rock. So all of that stuff that we kind of covered earlier in the video, this is where it's being generated. This is obviously a pretty straightforward implementation of two autonomous agents talking to each other. In the case of a debate, one thing we could do is try to see what happens when you push these parameters. Are there ways for the large language models to introduce misinformation, to hallucinate, to misuse sources? Does the quality degrade over time? All those things we could be testing. What happens when we crank up the temperature? What happens when we introduce search sources that are maybe a little less reputable? I'm always interested in building tools. I want to make this sort of technology more accessible to more people. The reason I went down this rabbit hole in the first place was because a friend of mine who is a video game artist wanted to be able to include in his art a simulated conversation between two AI implemented in the Unity game engine. So. I'd love to make an interface that allows him to just call this tool from within Unity via an API and just pass it the parameters he wants, say the persona, the temperature, the context limit, et cetera, and not have to worry about any of this code, any of this importing of libraries. You may have your own ideas. I'd love to hear about them. I'd love to see what you make with this. If you do anything, if you have any questions, reach out. Feel free to check out my other videos. Hopefully they'll be of help as you navigate AI, just like I'm trying to navigate AI. Good luck. Thanks.